10% owner, disqualified person, prohibited transaction rule explained. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And today's advits, I'm going to finally explain it succinctly, easily, in just a few minutes, how the 10% ownership rule works for the IRS prohibited transaction rules under Internal Revenue Code section 4975E. So in sum, you can do almost anything you want with your IRA or 401k, except three things. You can't buy life insurance. There is an exemption for 401ks. So you can in a 401k, just not in an IRA. You can't buy collectibles like art, baseball cards, comic books. And thirdly, and broadly, and more relevant for today's podcast, you can't do anything that directly or indirectly personally benefits a disqualified person. A disqualified person is essentially you, your lineal descendants, parents, children, spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, or any entities control 50% or more by such persons. I said general because there's a couple of provisions, mainly E2H and I, that talk about 10% or more shareholders. And there is a lot of confusion. Hey, this, you said 50%, or does the 10% work? So let me explain these two provisions and it will make more sense. And there's actually two different rules, one for a 401k and one for an IRA. So I'll talk about the 401k first because it's the easiest. Under 4975E2I, it says a 10% or more capital or profits partner or joint venture of a person described in C, D, E, and G of this section. Okay. Um, so that means C says a 10% or more of an employer who has a 401k. That's why that 10% threshold gets triggered right there for a 401k, because C says an employer of any of any of whose employers are covered by a plan. D talks about a employee organization. It's not relevant. Um, then we go into um, E, which talks about a 50% or more company. So then you need to have a company where 50% or more are owned by a disqualified person. Then that triggers the 10% rule. So E means you need to have 50% or more before the 10% rule can get triggered. Okay, and same with G where you need 50% or more of a corporation, partnership, or estate, and then the 10% owner of that 50% or more would get triggered. So for example, if Adam owns 55% of a company and Jane owns 20% of that company, because I own more than 50% and Jane owns more than 10% of the company, Jane and I are disqualified. Okay, but if Jane owned 12% of a business that has a 401k, she would be disqualified, even though she's less than the 50%, but because she's essentially considered um, almost like a uh, controlling shareholder, because the thresholds are a little bit different for a 401k than an IRA. So if you look at C, 4975E2C, it says an employer, any of whose employees are covered by a plan. So the employer, if ABC Inc. has a 401k, ABC Inc. is a disqualified person, and it becomes disqualified as to a 10% or more shareholder of that company. Whereas if you look at H, 4975E2H says, an officer, director, okay, a 10% or more shareholder, a highly compensated employee, earning 10% or more of the yearly wages from C, again, an employer, 401k, not an IRA, D, the employee organization, not relevant. Um, e, again, the... 50% or more and G the 50% or more. Okay. So in the case of an IRA, you need to have a situation where it's the Adam Jane, where Adam owns more than 50% and Jane is either a highly comp, owns more than 10% uh, or has is an officer director of that company. And then Jane would be disqualified as to Adam and that entity. Okay. But in the IRA world, you need to have a 50% threshold reach before a 10% or more shareholder could be triggered and be treated as a disqualified person. So if Adam owned 30% and Jane owned 10%, Adam and Jane wouldn't be disqualified and Jane would not be disqualified to the company. But if Jane was part of a 401k and the company had a 401k and the plan was not an IRA, but a 401k on the other side of the deal, then if Jane owned more than 10%, she would be a disqualified person because of C. So IRAs and 401ks have different rules regarding the 50 and 10 rule. If you're in the IRA world, 
there needs to be more than 50% ownership by a person for them to be disqualified to someone who owns more than 10% of that company. In the 401k world, you don't have the 50% threshold. As long as you own more than 10% of the company, you're a disqualified person. Okay. For most solos, it's not an issue because the person's going to own close to 100% anyway. So clearly they're always going to be disqualified. But it could happen where you have a solo plan for, you know, let's say a company with four owners and, you know, it's 25, 25, 25, 25. Like they all potentially are disqualified to each other because they're all owe more than 10%. Um, whereas if they didn't have a 401k but had IRAs, they'd be okay to each other, assuming they're not family. So that's where the division exists because C talks about an employer whose employers are covered by a plan. Um, I guess a SEP it could be an issue, but if it's an individual retirement account and not a SEP simple or 401k, C won't apply because employee there's no employee-employer relationship. But the 50% threshold would apply to the IRA as well as the 401k. But if you stayed under the 50%, then that 10% or more shareholder or highly comp would not trigger the prohibited transaction rules. And those two individuals would not become disqualified. And the 10% or more or highly comp would not also be disqualified to that entity because you don't have a 50% or more threshold um, being reached. Um, that's it. So the main point to this podcast is different rules for 401ks and IRAs. 401k, if you just own more than 10% of a company that has a plan, you're, you're a disqualified person. For an IRA, you need someone in that company to have more than 50%. And then you need to own more than 10% to have a relationship uh, that is disqualified between those two parties. That's it. I hope I um, did a decent job. <laughs> it's kind of confusing. So I, I hope I did a decent, probably not an amazing. But um, I um, suggest checking out 4975E2 um, H and I. Um, and it's we we've done blogs on this. I'll actually um, probably write another blog on this um, subject so you can refer to it. But just remember, I, E2I talks about uh, 401k and the 10%. And then H talks about highly comps, directors, 10% or more owners. But in order for that individual who owns 10% or more to be a disqualified person, they need to be transacting with someone and that company owns more than 50%. If those two people are not transacting, there's no disqualified person relationship and there's no prohibited transaction. Okay, there you go. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was super technical, but it's important to understand it because I always got questions saying, hey, Adam, I own, I read about this 10%. You Also, I read about a 50%. What's the dynamic? What's the connection? What's the link? I don't get it. This podcast, this video, hopefully explains it. 10% for a 401k plan, ownership of an employer. Uh, for an IRA, you need that 50 and the 10 to connect the two individuals or parties. Um, that's it. Um, take care. Have a great, great um, day. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. This is a podcast that drops generally every Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday, depending on how busy we are, uh, summer um, craziness, you know, travel, all that stuff, vacations, all the fun stuff. But if you have comments, leave them. Um, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you get notifications. If you don't subscribe, what are you waiting for? Do it. It's free. Um, if you have questions, comments, leave them. Love to hear from everyone. Look forward to hearing uh, good, bad, the ugly, whatever. Uh, I don't care. Love just getting feedback. Thanks for all your support and take care.